one year off the full scale. Oh no, I went, I'm just going to read you up. I went, I made a mistake there. I'll cut that bit out. Alexander Romanseva is a human rights activist and since May 2014 has been working at the Center for Civil Liberties. As executive director, she learned that the Center for Civil Liberties had become a Nobel Prize laureate for 2022. From 2016, she coordinated a project observing the human rights violations and war crimes in the east of Ukraine and political persecution in occupied Crimea. As a leading figure within the Center for Civil Liberties, she's been actively engaged in advocacy, seeking international support for Ukraine and to bring those responsible for war crimes in Ukraine to justice. And this is the second time we've spoken. It's an immense privilege to be able to speak to you. Um, and I learned so much from our first conversation. Thank you, thank you. I'm really love to speak again. And we, we have really deep conversation last time. So I hope this second part will be same interest. I think so, absolutely. And we, we so much has happened uh, since we last spoke. I think one of the one of the pivotal points, because we, we, we were talking a lot about sort of Donbass and we were talking about the differences between people whose first language is Russian uh, and, and Ukrainian and the journey a lot of people are going on in learning Ukrainian and so on. And perhaps some of the misconception in the West of you know, if you speak Russian, then somehow you must be Russian. Somehow Crimea must be Russian. Somehow Odessa must be Russian because because a lot of people there speak Russian. We know that's not true. And what we've seen in the last couple of weeks is this extraordinary missile attack on Odessa, on the cathedral. Um, Russia destroying the things that supposedly it started the war to protect. Um, what, are your, what are your impressions? What's the impact of the Odessa attacks? Look, we need to like just be, be exactly put it in the line always. Russia don't say true. They always... Exactly, they stayed producing only lie and producing only blood. So when we speak about, we care about NATO coming to our borders or we care about Russian church at Ukraine, or they uh, they exactly have a law that all the people who speak Russia, it's Saatechistaniki. Saatechistaniki, it's like co-motherlanders. I, I don't know, do you, do you have this um, this like word for that in, in English, but it's like, it's like, uh, we need to protect them. No, it's like Russians, it's just a language. That means that Russian language can be learned at any university whole the world. And not mean that one person can spoke Russian or even they spoke with some part of family uh, saying. It's not mean that you have a power, you honor of these people. That's because um, Russian Federation not speak about, okay, so you Russian speaker, you Co-lend, uh, co-mother lenders with us. So we propose you new, I don't know, support, new benefits. No, we propose you exactly obligations. We propose you what you uh, what you need to give to Russia, culture, Russia, world, and all of this. So um, it's, uh, it's abusing uh, relationship totally. Uh, that's why, for example, I, uh, my mom, she speak only Russian. But uh, because she exactly was born in the Russia and part of our family from there, and, and it's a lot of mix between Russia and Ukraine. But now she exactly don't want to speak Russian because, no, 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 you know, guys, and now it's a question of security. But um, when we speak about what kind of targets Russian choose, it's always about money. Odessa, it's the biggest port, more important port for great deal for export of grain. Now we do a lot export of grain to uh, trains, uh, to other uh, other form of logistic, but uh, exactly more important for uh, grain market, it's Odessa still. And if before Odessa was one of the place which exactly this mythology about Odessa, it's one of the uh, Russian empire city, Ekaterina II or Ekaterina Great, like um, found him and blah, blah, blah. Uh, but it's uh, it's exactly started to be ruined, like all the illusion the Soviet Union created. Soviet Union was really great in that. When we speak about Crimea and existing in Crimea, this mythology, that Crimea it's a place with Russia, family, Russian Empire family. I mean, this uh, Tsar, uh, last Tsar was really loved being Crimea, but nobody exactly never checked. Russians never win war about Crimea. Russians always lose there. 
And even when we speak about like Sevastopol, <laughs> that's just a long, long history of losing. And exactly Britain's one of the guys could do that at Crimea. So that's why it's so, so important to uh, work with people, give them the truth, give them critical minds, critical look at all each information, not only Russia for information, but whole, whole the information, because it starts to be part of security. So when you look at the information, check it, going to the first uh, sources, uh, going and make your own conclusions. It's really important. Now, uh, last uh, big uh, uh, big strike, that was Zaporizhia. Zaporizhia, it's same big industrial region. And Zaporizhia city exactly looks like exhibition of different kinds of plants and factories. And uh, a lot of Zaporizhia was built during the Soviet Union time. That's why Russians told that that we are build it no 15 different countries build it but a uh, question that they exactly hitting um a hotel they know that head of un mission here at ukraine she was like few days before there so russians exactly do that not only trying to scare ukraine they exactly trying to ruin standard of international bodies like un same situation for, uh, for for us, we see that they now holding at captivity 500 medicine workers, civilians and war, uh, I mean, militarians, uh, part of our army, and then don't care about that. It's one of the first basic principle of international humanitarian law. It's a respect of status, people who support health, people who uh, like uh, support people at suffering. It's medicine worker and they don't care. They, again, they, they keep them in the jail. They don't have any contacts with International Red Cross Committee. They don't give them uh, any possibility to be normal, even feeding, support their medicine health. And it's a doctor. So they see what happened with other groups, which not supporting by, so it's like, it's the people who suffering not only by themselves, but all what they want, uh, what they look around, they can help if they have some medicine or access to these people. But uh, Russian authorities don't give them this access to other prisoners who exactly suffering from some some illness. So see, see like this period of our like between uh, two hour conversation, I I exactly can say the Russian Federation started deconstruct system of protection which now we we told about it's maybe not perfectly work but we have it and now russia trying to construct it totally so this respect to medicine worker respect to political uh, to war prisoners uh my question about access to some negotiation uh like uh, uh groups about uh, result of this kidnapping the children's all of this Points which exactly at the basic, we think that evolution of our, you know, uh, society at Europe, we pass all of this basic understanding, but Russia come back and ruin them. So when, when they told about sovereign not exist, we we go into Donbass, we go into Crimea because because, you know, now we when speak about uh, Georgia, you know, that was um, uh, exactly uh, day of that. Uh, the 7, 7 of August, that was day of starting this short war in uh, 2018. And when we look at the Georgia, it's same. It's question about sovereignty. They just put two region of Georgia, not so big, exactly, two region of these small, uh, small countries. And at this region, people don't have a, like, you know, a support of Russians. They don't have a, a support of their uh, better organized uh, life. They exactly don't have any access to manage their life, to produce some rules for their life. So Russia destroyed, deconstruct totally whole the institution of democracy at any great zone which they create. It's both Transnistria, Abkhazia, Ossetia, Nagorno Karabakh, it's between Armenia and Azerbaijan. Uh, it's um, uh, about Donbass, Crimea, and now hold the occupied territory by, uh, by Ukraine. So exactly. Exactly, they 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 trying to. <laughs> we we same have a country, whole the world, you know, where the democracy not so 
mm, um, not not so stable and not so balanced. Uh, so people still trying to fight for them and all of this. We see what happened in India now. That's the question about nationalism there and all of this. But here you see exactly that Russia blocked new and new territory, new and new group of people from any possibility to have democracy because democracy, it's not... It's not a myth, it's not a dream. It's exactly, it's, it's, uh, it's just a tool to manage your own life together with people who, with whom you live in this territory uh, to, to find the solution, how live together, what kind of rules you will have and, uh, and possibility be protected for each individual rights and each individual freedoms. So it's it's not easy even like go running democracy. It's not easy to live in democracy because it's it's take from your time, it's take from your attention, and it's your responsibility. Because now here at Ukraine, we feel that we fight for democracy because because it's our choice, and that's mean you're responsible for your country. Uh, it's not Marcian comes, you know, and need to build for you your country. You need to build for you. Uh, that's why. When we speak about Russia and their choice, they try now uh, push away, like uh, like take away from here international representation. They trying to uh, to scare exactly people who make these deals about grain, the deals who make these economical stuffs, because they know that it's still part of our like third of part of our budget. So and this budget we spent for our army. We are not spent money. We can't exactly spend money from our partners for supporting our army to buy weapons or something. There's no. Uh, we can do that only from from budget which we have from eco our own economic. And you you can just imagine if any of your business can be stopped because rockets come in and it's happen every day in all the cities of Ukraine. So business running business here it's not easy. <laughs> so. So that's why it's so important to exactly find the solution. That's why it's so important maybe uh, choose such connection like, I don't know, India, Russia, because when we speak about medicine worker, um, it's a question about standards of security of this kind of action, so like medicine, supporting by medicine. And such countries like, I don't know, um south africa india brazil really interesting in that be, be a part of you know uh world health system so at, for this world health system exactly we need to respect for medicine worker and now russia try and destroy even that and the other major change i think we've seen is that uh, you know since the failure of russia to take Kiev, i think those who sort of, you know, understand what's going on and saying that Russian defeat is inevitable. Um, the price is high, but the, Russia lost this war from the early stage. But because Putin hasn't given up, because they're throwing more and more and more at it, it is going to stretch out clearly. Um, do you detect that Russia has moved from a sort of offensive uh, part of this conflict to very much a defensive position. And now it's simply a process of pushing them out inch by inch, mile by mile. To me, this just emphasizes the sheer pointlessness of something which feels inevitable. Or, or do you worry that quite the reverse, that thinking about Ukrainian victory is inevitable is, is actually quite dangerous? Uh, it's a war. It's all of these dangers. <laughs> like stay and not act nothing. It's dangerous. Going to fight for your territory is dangerous. You know, uh, say that, okay, we surrounded. It's dangerous because they come in like occupators and they, they will kill. That's why we choose exactly fight. Because we understood totally that all other options that mean to be destroyed like a country, to be destroyed like a, like a population. Um, so I'm not military expert. I can say uh, I, I can exactly, you know, some some uh, uh, some uh, give this some accounts about uh, what we need to do, like military and or something. Like this. But I can say totally that um, Russians it's a huge army, 
Uh, and we three times less, but we still fight. And that adds for me that victory. And main idea of Ukrainians is have a defending. Now we see that only one way it's a fight is have a weapons. But if somebody proposes other system of defending, can we be sure that it's work? We accept it, <laughs> sure. But it's, it's a problem that uh, till we have Russians at our territory, we will never have a security. Even when we push them out from all our territory, we still need to think about system of defending. But that give us all, give us back all the, our resources because like now it's um, it's blocked near 12% of our territory and it's blocked near the 40% of our economic uh, economic possibilities, our resource. And it's uh, uh, near like, when we speak about occupation, it's it's near like eight million people possible can be blocked or don't have access for their basic property if it still exists. Because when we speak about like Volnavaha, Mariupol, it can be not exist at all. So that's so it's even just sometimes people tell uh, like outside people, why you not give them this territory and don't don't make like your perfect stay in the and the territory will uh, with stay with you. Because, first of all, Russia, it's empire. Empire don't have a, empire have a center, empire don't have a limitations, don't have a borders. It will be spread always. And we told about that when they took Crimea and Donbass, when they occupied it, we told about they will go in next because we are not sure that it's impossible to do that. We are not reacting now. So, so that's why it's, it's not means that we can, I don't know, let's, let's, I don't know, stay here or just defend ourselves. No, we need to release people. We need to release uh, territory because it's, it's security issues from one side and from other sides because our state exactly responsible for that. Uh, our state promise to our population, keep safe their human rights, keep safe their lives. So, so our states have an obligation to fight and release our territory. Is it difficult? Yes. Is it we lose a lot of people? Yes. We we know of us, we don't have numbers, all the numbers, you know. But we we have a relatives, we have a friends who are now at the front lines, and every day some someone dying for that, for for possibility to have a victory. So for us, victory is sure releasing our people, releasing our territory. And when I speak about people, I first of all speak about people at the occupied territory, but second, it's the people who was kidnapped and moved to the territory, forcibly moved to the territory of Russia Federation. And second, ensure it's it's create some defending system. And after this, create so powerful justice system here that any crimes which was committed at the territory of Ukraine be punished, be judged, and even I don't know, person who committed dying at the battlefield or something like this, but we need like society and whole the world history need to recognize these crimes, to find hold the obstacles around them, to, to find hold the victims, witness, survivors from these crimes, give them support, and put this in the manual of history that nobody can do that. The people who, who think about commit something like this need to be punished, need to be stopped, need to be out of the law at any any normal civilized world. That's what that's important. And that's how victory for us looks like. That's what we try and do even now, not wait, waiting just victory day. But we need to be prepared for that now. And we are tired, sure emotionally tired, physically tired, economically tired, but but still we don't have other, other options. We need to be fight, fight to to just be alive and have a possibility live here and have a future for us, for other people and for all the Europe because it's if we are fall, it will be a disaster for all the Europe. It's like right wing some politicians uh, just just rising up everywhere will they just feel this blood you know and it will be it's happened like this we, we know that
And you've dedicated your life to pursuing justice, even where it might seem improbable that justice will ever be achieved. I get the impression, you know, you're like a bloodhound on a scent. You'll never let that go. You're, you're going to pursue that justice no matter what. And since we last spoke, um, Lvov Bilova and uh, Putin have uh, had an international arrest warrant put out for them. So that's the first question. How significant is that as a change? You know, charging a major head of state, um, albeit we know he's not really a politician. He's really just a, a sort of KGB mafia thug. But charging a, a nominal head of state with crimes. The second question is going to relate to another event that's happened since we last spoke, and that is the ecocidal terrorism against the Kahovka, Novokahovka Dam, and what seems to be a lack of international jurisdictional framework that could pursue a prosecution for ecocide in time of war. Ecocide, you know that it's not international crimes. We have them in the national um, uh, national legislation. So just come back. I started from the second question about ecocide because it's exactly totally uh, like disaster here. Uh, like um, down the river uh, at the bank of Black Sea, we have a few national parks with unique, absolutely unique atmosphere, with unique numbers of flora, faunas, animals. Some uh, uh, so that was all of this was destroyed. A lot of water bring like cemetery, you know, bring the some some of garbage uh, like uh, polygons and all of this at the water. Dead people were there, uh, and so so it's it's totally uh, like disaster for whole ecology system around the Black Sea and Black Sea connected with whole whole other sea around and whole whole the world ocean. So uh, what that means? That means exactly uh, that dams and nuclear power station it's special uh, it's special part of international humanitarian law. They, uh, international humanitarian law and Roma statute don't have an ecocide like uh, like uh, kind of crimes, but still that's like a special object which can be really uh, undiscriminate uh, using like at the par part of war. So that's why we uh, we sure appeal about that to hold the international bodies around the ecology, and that means that Russia don't care about even such big. Um, Ruins such big ecology of fluids and all of that. So, so that's why all of us we start to speak about. Okay, we have a dump, but next we have a nuclear power station, Zaporozhye, one of the biggest in the Europe and one of the biggest in the world. So, so they they can do that, and that's important to to understand that they uh, they they will not like all what happened with Black Sea fluent, for example, for, to Kuban. Kuban, it's south part of uh, of Russia. Uh, Kuban, it's uh, exactly place where they are rising their grain because it's such region like Ukraine, black soil, same. And they don't care about that. So it's possible they will not care about what happened with uh, the population, Russian population near the territory of Ukraine if uh, the Parisian nuclear power will be blowing. So that's why that's why it's so important exactly for the question that it's not a conflict between Russia and Ukraine. It's not a conflict between, you know, China and and uh, USA, how I heard about that in Africa. It's a point of the world map, which exactly can ecological fluid for whole the world. And it's you can see it somewhere, I don't know in Yorkshire or in California and think about, no, 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 it's it's not about me, or in Japan or in South Africa. No, it will be about you. It will touch you. So um, we hope that exactly it will be separate case at the International Criminal Court. But International Criminal Court, like International Prosecutor, they uh, give the warrants only when they have hold the link. So this high level guy give the order these people exactly implemented. That's happened war crime, crime against humanity or crime of genocide. 
and when they have hold this link, when they have uh, like uh, like one hundred percent evidence about all of this link, they open the uh, open the case and give the warrant. Uh, th that's their rules because exactly uh, protection, like representation of uh, people who accused at the international criminal really high. I mean, it's a truly fair um, fair court. So that will be protection for them, like lawyers who will work for, uh, for protected accused uh, person. They will be really high level um, professionals and they will check all the details of the of the case, all the evidence and all this. So that's why prosecutor really, you know, they really heart in that exactly give, give uh, take all of this evidence when uh, that's why when we speak with international criminal court we propose and make a submission it will be a submission uh which exactly um, uh, about some concrete topic so we we not speak about whole whole the crimes we choose one kind of crimes for example um first submission which we, which we will represent it's about um, uh, shelling of uh, civilian object and civilian people. Uh, so, uh, so we collect it with the evidence. We'll send it to international uh, international criminal court, like submission. They take this information, check because we are, we, we don't have a mandate to investigate for them. So, so they will check. Start the day over an investigation, and if they found we we trying to collect all the information for them to support. Next one, it will be genocide in Mariupol. Next one, it will be about uh, uh, exactly torturing people and kidnap people. So we will do that one by one because we have this our open database and we hope that it will help to uh, international prosecutor exactly push these new cases and open new cases against the Russian army and their head. So Putin, not only politicians, but by his position, he is a head of army of Russia Federation. So he can say that, sorry, I don't know about that some of my order, my generals uh, using like this or something. No, because exists such understanding like commander uh, responsibility. So he is responsible what the, his general do, what the uh, different part of army do here. So, yeah. A big focus now, of course, is on victory, and a lot of people's attention is rightly focused on the battlefield, uh, the role of Crimea and so on. Now, we're not, you know, you're not a military expert, so I won't tackle that angle, but the event we held uh, yesterday, really, the key focus was how to achieve victory, what does the West need to do to increase the speed and volume of its support for Ukraine. But eventually, what does a full victory mean? And many on the panel were saying that victory doesn't just stop when territory is recovered. It doesn't just stop at the battlefield. There are many, many aspects to Ukrainian victory. So what is your long-term vision that you could say, yes, we definitely achieve victory? What individual successes would have to be achieved for a fully comprehensive Ukrainian victory? Mm, good question, good question. You know, we still need emotional support. I mean, uh, because first of all, we, we're tired and we need to feel that people around the world care about what happened here. Uh, from politician in diplomacy, we, we really as, expect not only military support, but support at um, some of case of uh, situation with, for example, exchange the people, um, some of case to uh, have a discussion about reforms at Ukraine, because if, for example, Ukraine will have a strong court system, it's help us to do this. Uh, it's really important still think about some negotiation, negotiation um, possibilities, for example, uh, put, uh, I don't know, Saudi Arabia, India, South Africa, Brazil, and their possibility, because they think they can flee into Russia. Okay, check it. <laughs> yes. These guys can ask Russia to release the uh, Zaporizhia nuclear power station from gangs and people, uh, from uh, people, any militarians. 
exactly I think Ukraine will uh, will accept the situation when the Parisian nuclear power station will be controlled by international megate staff, not Ukrainians. It's okay because we we just want that this power station not uh, not blowing up and work for Ukrainian energetic system. Exactly, I think Russians do that. They trying to um, if they're not blowing the Parisian nuclear power station. So they just trying to turn it off that for Ukraine, it's, it will be again deficit of some, um, some electricity, you know, uh, manage, mentions uh, issues. So, uh, so first of all, here, it's mean that we need to try to find new and new and new solutions, because I think inside the Russia still people have some from one side tomorrow, Putin will use the propaganda system and say, look, we are winning this war. So we take out our guys, uh, bring them home, and we'll lie them again about so important uh, this that was so good, so so important, so fabulous. Uh, from other side, I think the day by day Russian population, uh, it's not monolith, it's not monogroup. So they they think about that, but still they don't have this tradition and partly they don't have like positive experience uh, about uh, to fight for their freedoms, to take responsibility for their countries. And it's a huge problem because when you speak with people, they like, okay, but I just want to live my life, my private life. But you can live your private life safety, <laughs> safely if your country like a uh, against you against your 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 rights <laughs> so you, you need to manage this problem and after this it's like build your private life for you and for your children and for family so that's why uh first of all i think it's we need to find this solution uh, like select and uh, disconnect propaganda and freedom of speech it's big home task for all of us uh from other side, we need to find solutions how to stop Russian economy. Because even now, even from EU, even from UK, even from US, Russian accept, uh, Russian receive all what they need to continue all this war. And to to all of this, we still don't have any any sanction from UN. We don't have any. All the sanction, it's all private state or uh, like. A separate state or EU, any measures for Russia because of the war from United States not happen. What does mean? This mean United States not work, UN United Nations not work at all. So that means that we we have a huge problems. Not only for us. What happened in Nigeria now? What happened in Sudan? What happened whole whole this time? I don't know in. In a lot of countries, we don't have like international bodies who can react. That's why it's again sure we we waiting support for us, but we waiting exactly this this all of these mechanisms start to be stronger. Maybe some reflexy, maybe some reforms to to change to change the possibility to react. So again, just just repeat, yeah support Ukraine by military, uh, think about some of, of the way how to flew into Russia through other partners around the world and such threats like a nuclear power station or kidnapping or shelling by civilians or something like this can be stopped by friends of Putin, I mean, from countries who still have a connection with them or releasing medicine worker from captivity. Uh, and uh, and exactly think about how to reform, how to change the situation with UN, OEC, and Council of Europe, because before that was a place which exactly we, you know, solve the conflicts uh, and without weapons. So it's important to have this possibility again. Well, uh, Alexandra, I'm hugely grateful to speak to you again. I hope we get the opportunity. Uh, I'm sure. There'll be plenty to talk about in the, in the coming months. Um, I'm so glad we could connect today, and it 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 feels um, it feels so good to be able to talk to you when you know we're in the same borders within the same country. I'm here in Lviv, uh, and I know you're you're uh, quite a long way away. I hadn't I hadn't quite appreciated the huge size and scale of Ukraine when I arrived 
um, I said to my host, let's pop along to Kiev, you know, just <laughs> on a day trip. And he said, no, that's not, not going to happen. But within the same borders, I think it's massively important that people understand Ukraine, engage with Ukraine, support Ukraine. Um, even for selfish reasons, they'll be supporting their own freedom if they do so. I hope you enjoyed Lviv Kava. You need to drink it because it's one of the best place for that. I hope you enjoyed Banos. It's local, regionally really nice. You need to try it with white mushrooms. It's one of the best there. You need to eat chicken kiev at Lviv. You can find it really nice. Borsh, Vareniki. It's like you, you need to take all, enjoy all the trip of Ukraine because Lviv is more secure than Kiev. I hope you will enjoy this stay. And I've only done one of those things. I had Vereniki, but that's it. I've still got a big long list and I'm leaving tonight at three in the morning. Uh, but we're driving out to the need, countryside now. But <laughs> You need to try exactly uh, Vareniki with South Cherry because South Cherry is not so, not so popular yeah. outside of Ukraine. South Cherry is one of the best dishes in the world. I just ask you, j- j- right now, just order it. <laughs> <laughs> you need it okay we're driving to the countryside so maybe we'll stop off at a a little sort of countryside uh cafe yeah, and... any place any place at ukraine you always have a good food so be be sure that even at the roadside it will be really great that's marvelous thank you so much good luck with the incredible work you're doing and your colleagues as well um and hopefully we'll speak again soon thank you bye bye Slava Ukraine. Heroin, Slava.